I'm kind of sick and tired of the fucking divide in our country where Trump, the enemy of democracy. Yeah, I, they're all the fucking enemy of democracy, you, you fucking idiots. They're all the fucking enemies of democracy. All the goddamn politicians. Dang, dang, god dang politicians, god dang politicians in our country. Are the freaking enemies of democracy. The only difference between Trump and a lot of them is that actually Trump likes his country a lot, a little bit more, see it a little bit more than the others. He doesn't hate it. He has more respect for this country, which is why I like Trump. All you need to do is just look up his views on on the Bush administration. Like, sure. And I did say he was the enemy of democracy. Because when you get into that fucking office, you become the enemy of democracy. You know... The federal government as it stands right now is for corruption on all fucking sides. Let's say all oh, only those those right wing white whitey tighty racist Republicans. And you know the Republicans are in league with the with Satan. Just as much as the Democrats are in league with Satan. On Saturday night, LaVey recalled in one of our long talks, I would see men lusting after half-naked girls dancing at the carnival. And on Sunday morning, when I was playing the organ for tent show evangelist at the other end of the carnival lot, I would see these same men sitting in the pews with their wives and children, asking God to forgive them and purge them of their carnal desires. And the next Saturday night, they'd be back at the carnival or some other place of indulgence. I knew then that the Christian church thrives on hypocrisy and that men's carnal nature will out, will out no matter how much it is purged or scourged by any white light religion. Little personal commentary. Of all the churches that I have been a part of, every one of them had adultery, fornication, high sexual energy, Every one of them. And you know what? The biggest liars I've ever met in my life were in those churches. I have been screwed by, not by men who never profess Christianity. I've been screwed by those who say that they're devout Christians. Men of integrity, moral compass, who would rile at me to bring such a book to any audience. Satan is not a personification. Satan, remember, by Anton LaVey's definition, and we're going to get more into that, is the negative energy, the dark energy. And it's been classified dark by those of the white light religions. Though LaVey did not realize it then, he was on his way towards formulating a religion that would serve as the antithesis of Christianity and its Judaic heritage. It was an old religion, older than Christianity or Judaism, but it had never been formalized, arranged into a body of thought and ritual. It was to become LaVey's role in 20th century civilization. Folks, this is older than any religion in the world. Why do you think they vilified it, hit it? How shall we say, um, plagiarized it, tried to rearrange it? After LeVay became mar a married man himself in 1951 at the age of 21, he abandoned his wondrous works of the carnival to settle into a career better suited for homemaking. 
he had enrolled uh, as a criminological uh, as a criminology criminology degree major in City College of San Francisco. This led to his first conformist job, a photographer for the San Francisco Police Department. As it worked out, that job had as much to do as any other with his development of Satanism as a way of life. LaVey said, I saw the bloodiest, grimmest side of human nature, LaVey recounted in a session dealing with his past life. People shot by nuts, knived by their friends, little kids splattered in the gutter by hit and run drivers. It was disgusting and depressing. I asked myself, where is God? I came to detest the sanctimonious attitude of people towards violence, always saying it was God's will. I never understood that myself. How could something so grotesque, something so horrendous, be of a loving God? Why isn't this loving God stronger? All he does is sell a song and a dance, never delivering. Our world, if this is ruled or even overseen by a loving God, I don't want any of that kind of love. I'll put it that way. So he quit in disgust after three years of being a crime pho uh, crime photographer and returned to playing organ, this time in nightclubs and theaters to earn a living while he continued his studies into his life's passion, the black arts. Once a week, he held classes on arcane topics, hauntings, ESP, dreams, vampires, werewolves, divination, ceremonial magic, etc. They attracted many people who were, or have since become, well-known in the arts and sciences and the business world. Eventually, a magic circle evolved from this group. The major purpose of the circle was to meet for the performance of magical rituals LaVey had discovered or devised. He had accumulated a library of works that described the Black Mass and other infamous ceremonies conducted by groups such as the Knights Templar in the 14th century in France, the Hell Fire Club, and the Golden Dawn in 18th century and 19th century England. The intent of some of these secret orders was to blaspheme, lampoon the Christian church, and address themselves to the devil as an anthropomorphic deity that represented the reverse of God. In LaVey's view, the devil was not that, but rather a dark, hidden force in nature responsible for the workings of earthly affairs a force for which neither science nor religion had any explanation. LaVey Satan is the spirit of progress, the inspirer of all great movements that contribute to the development of civilization and the advancement of mankind. He is the spirit of revolt that leads to freedom, the embodiment of all heresies that liberate. On the last night of April 1966, on the Warpershnot of the most important festival in the lore of magic and witchcraft, LaVey's ritualistic sh shaved his head in accordance with magical tradition and announced the formation of the Church of Satan for proper identification as its minister. He put on the clerical collar, up to that collar, he looked almost holy, but his Genghis Kong like shaven head, his metaphorastrian metaphor, metaphor beard, and his narrow eyes gave him the necessary demonic look for his priesthood of the devil's church on earth. For one thing, LaVey explained himself, calling it a church enabled me to follow the magic formula of one part outrage to nine parts social respectability that is needed for success. But the main purpose was to gather a group of like-minded individuals together for the use of their combined energies in calling up the dark force in nature that is called Satan. As LaVey pointed out, all other churches are based on worship of the spirit and denial of the flesh and the intellect. 
he saw the need for a church that would recapture man's mind and carnal desires as objects of celebration. Rational self-interest would be encouraged and a healthy ego companion. Hmm. He began to realize that the old concept of a black mass to satirize Christian services was outmoded or, as he put it, beating a dead horse. In the Church of Satan, LaVey initiated some exhilarating psychodramas in lieu of Christianity's self-debasing services, thereby exercising repressions and inhabitations fostered by the white light religions. You know, folks, if you were never taught about demons, you would never be demon-possessed. And if you ask for the Holy Spirit to enter into you, how is that any different than any other demonic spiritual possession? There was a revolution in the Christian church itself against orthodox rites and traditions. It had become popular to declare that God is dead. So the alternative rites that LaVey worked out, while still maintaining some of the trappings of ancient ceremonies, were changed from the negative mockery to the positive forms of celebrations and purges. Satanic weddings, consecrating the joys of the flesh, funerals devoid of the sanctimonious platitudes, lust rituals to help individuals attain their sex desires, destruction of rituals to enable members of the Satanic church to triumph over enemies. On special occasions, such as baptisms, weddings, and funerals, in the name of the devil, press coverage, though unsolicited, was phenomenal. By 67, the newspapers were sending reporters to write about the Church of Satan, extended from San Francisco across the Pacific to Tokyo and across the Atlantic to Paris. A photo of a nude woman, half covered by a leopard skin, serving as an altar to Satan in a levee conceived wedding ceremony, was transmitted by major wire services to daily newspapers everywhere, and it showed up on the front page of the such ball walks as the media as the LA Times. As the result of the publicity, the grottos, LaVey's counterpart to Covens, affiliated with the Church of Satan, spread throughout the world, proving one of LaVey's cardinal messages, the devil is alive and highly popular with a great many people. Of course, LaVey pointed out to everyone who would listen that the devil to him and his followers was not the stereotype fellow eloped in red garb with horns, tails, and pitchforks but rather the dark forces in nature that human beings are just beginning to phantom. How did LaVey square that explanation with his own appearance at times in black crawl with horns? He replied, people need ritual with symbols such as the, those you find in a baseball game or a church. Folks, you know, listen, I have seen some pretty weird garbs. Uh, go to a Catholic mass. I mean, whoo, um, such as you find in baseball games or church services or wars as vehicles for expanding emotions they can't release or even understand on their own. Nevertheless, LaVey himself soon tired of the games. There were setbacks. First, some of LaVey's neighbors began complaining about the fully grown lion he was keeping as a house pet, and eventually the big cat was donated to the local zoo. Next. One of LaVey's most devoted witches, Jane Mansfield. Did y'all know that Jane's Mansfield, Marilyn Monroe, were witches? You'd be surprised to know how many others are. Um, died under a curse he had placed on the head of her suitor, lawyer Sam Brody. For a variety of reasons, I have explained in the, dark, in the Devil's Avengers, LaVey had persistently warned her away from Brody and felt depressed, depressed over her death. It was the second tragic death in the 60s of a Hollywood sex symbol with whom he had been intimately involved. The other was Marilyn Monroe. LaVey's primor for a brief but crucial period in 1948, when he had quit the carnival and was playing organ for strippers around the Los Angeles area. <sighs> mm. Now, due to time, I'm going to 
kind of spin this up because I really want to get into what you can actually see as the book itself. But it's important to understand who LaVey is or was. He's since passed on. Um, it says on the top of that list, LaVey was tired of organizing entertainments and purges for his church members. He had gotten in touch with the last living remnants of the Pewar occult fraternities of Europe and was busily acquiring their philosophies and secret rituals left over from the pre-Hitler era and needed time to study, write, and work out new principles. He had long been experimenting and applying the principles of geometric spatial concepts in what he terms the law of the trapezoid. He scoffs at current faddists who are barking up the wrong pyramids. He was also becoming widely sought as a speaker, guest on radio and television programs, and the production and or technical advisor of scores of television producers and movie making turning out satanic chillers. Sometimes he was also an actor. As a sociologist, Quentin R. Sanders points out, no occultist has had as a direct an impact upon formulary cinematic presentations of Satanism as has Anton Sandador LaVey. Ritual and esoteric symbolisms are central elements in LaVey's church and the films in which he had a hand contain detailed portrayals of satanic rituals and are filled with traditional cult symbols. The emphasis upon ritual in the Church of Satan is intended to focus the emotional powers within each individual. Similarly, orientate ritualism, ornate ritualism, is that is central to LaVey's films, may reasonably be seen as a mechanism to involve and focus the emotional experience of the cinema audience. Folks, this is what you could call seating. The fact is most of America in the last 70 years has been brought up more on satanic values than Christian morals. It's just a fact. Um, I want to keep on going on here. LaVey spreading out from organized churches' activities to writing books for the worldwide distribution has, of course, greatly expanded the Church of Satan membership. Satanism growing popularity has naturally been accompanied by scare, scary stories from religious groups complaining that the Santonic Bobby, a Bible, now outsells the Christian Bible on college campuses. It does, and is the leading corrosive factor in youngsters turning away from God. That ain't true. And certainly one suspects the Pope Paul had LaVey in mind when he issued his worldwide proclamation two years ago that the devil is alive and a person of living, fire-breathing character spreading evil over the earth. LaVey maintaining that evil is live, spelled backwards, and should be indulged in and enjoyed answers the Pope and the religious scare groups this way. You need to hear this. People, organizations, nations are making millions of dollars off of us. What would they do without us? Without the Church of Satan, there wouldn't have, there wouldn't have anybody to rage at and to take the blame for all the rotten things happening in the world. If they really feel this way, they shouldn't have blown us out of proportion. What you really have to believe instead is that they are the charlatans, and they're really glad to have us around so they can exploit us. We've been an extremely valuable commodity. We've helped business, lifted up the economy, and some of the millions of dollars we have generated flowed and have flown towards and flown into the Christian church. We have proved many times over the ninth satanic statement that says the church and countless individuals cannot exist without the devil. They can't. Why would they exist? What would they have a reason to exist for? These gods of the Christian, Judaic, Islam, Hindu, they always blame the converts. 
They always blame all the problems that they are supposedly the all-powerful ones that created this thing. Didn't the Christian God say that, oh, excuse me, is it the, the Jewish God? It's hard to find. But didn't he say he created evil for his own pleasure? I mean, how much of a deity are you going to worship that loves the smell of burnt flesh? Humanity is no longer willing to wait for any afterlife that promises to reward the clean, pure, translated, ascetic, drab spirit. There is a mood of neo-paganism and Hindu hedonism, and from it there have emerged a wide variety of brilliant individuals, doctors, lawyers, engineers, teachers, writers, stockbrokers, politicians, real estate developers, actors, actresses, mass communication media people to cite a few categories who are actual card-carrying Satanists who are interested in formalizing and perpetuating this all-pervading religion and way of life. It is not an easy religion to adapt in a society ruled for so long by Puritan ethics. There is no false, false altruism or mandatory love thy neighbor concept in this religion. Satanism is a blatantly selfish, brutal philosophy. It is based on the belief that human beings are inherently selfish, violent creatures, that life is a Darwinism struggle for survival of the fittest, and that only the strong survive and the earth will be ruled by those who fight to win the ceaseless competition that exists in all jungles, including those of the urbanized society. Abhor this brutal outlook, if you will. It is based, as it has been for centuries, on real conditions that exist in the world we inhabit, rather than the mystical lands of milk and honey depicted in the Christian Bible. Now, I want to get into it in itself. Um, prologue. The gods of the right-hand path. You see, folks, magic exists. You have the left-hand path, or you have the right-hand path. It's still magic. There's still powerful energies behind it, saturating it, saturating us. Why? We are the creative conduits, the capacitors. The, no God can create anything without the flesh. We're the ones who do it. LeVay knew this. Let's go on. The gods of the right-hand path have bickered and quarreled for an entire age of earth. Each of these deities and their respective priests and ministers have attempted to find wisdom in their own lives. The ice age of religious thought can last but a limited time in this great scheme of human existence. The gods of wisdom defiled have had their saga, and their millennium hath brought become as reality. Each with his own divine path to paradise, hath accused the other of heresies and spiritual indiscretions. The ring of the, and, I, and folks, I don't know if this is the Nablagan, doth carry an everlasting curse, but only because those who seek it out, seek it, think in terms of good and evil, themselves being at all times good. You see, folks, what's evil? You can't define evil. You can't define good. Whose measuring stick are you using? One thing I found about Lucifer, I never found in any writing about Lucifer ever condemning one human being. The creature, if it exists, always edifies, builds up. The gods of the past have become as their own devils in order to live. Feebly, their ministers play the devil's game to fill their tabernacles and pay the mortgages on their temples. Alas, too long have they studied righteousness, and poor and incompetent devils they make. So they all join hands in brotherly unity, and in their desperation go to Valhalla for their last great Emancipatory Council, Emancipatory, I'm having a tired time on my tongue. Maybe I'll get some tea. Oh, yes. 
Ecumenical Council. Dar with near in the gloom, the twilight of the gods, the ravens of night have flown forth to summon Loki, who has set Valhalla aflame with the searing trident of the inferno. The twilight is done, a glow of new light is born out of the night, and Lucifer is risen once more to proclaim, this is the age of Satan. Satan rules the earth. The gods of the unjust are dead. This is the morning of magic, the undefiled wisdom. The flesh prevaileth, and a great church shall be built, consecrated in its name. No longer shall man's salvation be dependent on his self-denial, and it will be known that the world of flesh and the living shall be the greatest preparation for any and all eternal delights. These are the um, nine statements of Satan. Regae Santaneus, Avea Santaneus. Hail Satan, the nine Santanic statements. One, Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence. Two, Satan represents vital existence instead of spiritual pipe, spiritual pipe dreams. Three, Satan represents undefiled wisdom instead of the hypocritical self-deceit. Four, Satan represents kindness to those who deserve it instead of love wasted on ingrates. Five, Satan represents vengeance instead of turning the other cheek. Six, Satan represents responsibility to the responsible instead of concern for the psychic vampires. What do you think takes place on Sunday? It's a buffet. I know. I was on the menu once. Seven, Satan represents man as just another animal, sometimes better, more often worse than those that walk on all fours, who, because of his divine, spiritual, and intellectual development, has become the most vicious animal of all. These are true statements, folks. I know we don't like to say this, but, you know, sometimes we have to put the big boy britches on. Satan represents all of the so-called sins as they all lead to physical, mental, and emotional gratification. Hmm. Nine, Satan has been the best friend the church has ever had. He has kept it in business all these years. Fire. The Book of Satan, the Infernal Tribe, Die Tribe, excuse me. The first book of the Santang Bible is not an attempt to blaspheme as much as it is a statement of what might be termed diabolical indignation. The devil has been attacked by the men of God relentlessly and without reservation. Never has there been an opportunity, a short of fiction, for the dark prince to speak out in the same manner as the spokesman of the Lord of the righteous. How would you like to be on trial and the only evidence is offered is by the prosecution? You don't have a word in it. The pulpit pounders of the past have been free to define good and evil as they see fit and have gladly smashed into oblivion any who disagree with their lives, both verbally and at times physically. Their talk of charity, when applied to his infernal majesty, becomes an empty sham, the most unfairly, too, considering the obvious fact that without their satanic foe, their very religious religions would collapse. No one would give a church a dime. Who's the most biggest single real estate holder in the world? Why? It's the Christian church, the Catholic church. Why? Why does a God demand payment? For what? Are you buying salvation? Hmm. <laughs> Uh, we continue. <laughs> How sad that the allegorical pers uh, personage, uh, pers personage most responsible for the success of their spiritual religions is shown the least amount of charity and the most consistent abuse. And by those who most un 
consciously preach the rules of fair play. For all the centuries of shouting down the devil has received, he has never shouted back at his detractors. He has remained the gentleman at all times. While those who support, excuse me, while those he supports rant and raves, he has shown himself to be a model of deportment, but now he feels it's time to shout back. He has decided it is finally time to receive his due. Now, the preponderance rule books of hypocrisy are no longer needed. In order to relearn the law of the jungle, a small, slim diatribe will do. Each verse is an infernal. Each word is a tongue of fire. The flames of hell burn fierce and purify. Read on and learn the law. Isn't it interesting that you hear Fire cleanses. Well, then hell has to be a very clean place. Passing through the fire, I think they call this. All right, the book of Satan. One, in this arid wilderness of steel and stone, I raise up my voice that you may hear. To the east and to the west I beckon. To the north and to the south, I show a sign proclaiming death to the weakling, wealth to the strong. Two, open your eyes that you may see, O men of mildewed minds, and listen to me, ye bewildered millions. Verse three, for I stand forth to challenge the wisdom of the world, to interrogate the laws of man and of God. I request reason for your golden rule and ask the why and wherefore of your Ten Commandments. Before none of your printed idols do I bend in acquiescence. And he who saith, thou shalt to me, is my mortal enemy, foe. I dip my forefinger in the watery blood of your impotent, mad redeemer, and right over his thorn-torn brow, the true prince of evil, the king of slaves. No hoary falsehood shall be a truth to me. No stifling dogma shall encramp my pen. I break away from all conventions that do not lead to my earthly success and happiness. I raise up in stern invasion that standard of the strong. I gaze into the glassy eye of your fearsome Jehovah and pluck him with the pluck him by the beard. I uplift my broad axe and split open his worm-eaten skull. I blast out the ghastly contents of philosophical whitened sepulchers and laugh with a sardonic wrath. Book two. Behold the crucifix. What does it symbolize? Pallid incompetence hanging on a tree? I question all things. As I stand before the festering and varnished facades of your haughtiest moral dogmas, I write thereon in letters of blazing scorn. Lo and behold, all this is fraud. Gather around me, O ye deaf defiant, and the earth itself shall be thine, and to have and to hold. To long the dead hand, to, too long the dead hand has been permitted to sterilize living thoughts. Too long right and wrong, good and evil have been inverted by false prophets. No creed must be accepted upon authority of a divine nature. Religions must be put to the question. No moral dogma must be taken for granted. No standard of measurement de deified. There is nothing inherently sacred about moral codes. Like the wooden idols of long ago, they are the work of human hands. And what man has made, man can destroy. He that is slow to believe anything and everything is of a great understanding. For belief in one false principle is the beginning of all unwisdom. The chief duty of every new age is to uppraise new men to determine its liberties, to lead 
it towards material success, to rend the rusty padlocks and chains of dead customs that always prevent healthy expansion, theories and ideas that may have meant life and hope and freedom for our ancestors may now mean destruction, slavery, and dishonor to us. As environments change, no human ideal standeth sure. Whenever, therefore, a lie has built upon itself a throne, let it be assailed without pity and without regard. For under domination of an inconvenient falsehood, no one can prosper. Let established theophisms uh, be dethroned, rooted out, burned, and destroyed. If they are a standing menace to all true nobility of thought and actions, whenever alleged truth is proven by results to be but an empty fiction, let it be unsummariously flung into the outer darkness among the dead gods, the dead empires, the dead philosophies, and other useless lumber and wreckage. The most dangerous of all enthroned lies is the holy, the sanctified, the privileged lie, the lie everybody believes to be the model of truth. It is the fruitful mother of all other popular errors and delusions. It is a hydra headed three for unreason with a thousand roots. It is a social cancer. The lie that is, that is known to be a lie is half eradicated, but the lie that even intelligent persons accept as fact, the lie that has been incalculated in a little child at its mother's knees is more dangerous to contend against than a creeping pestilence. Popular lies have ever been the most potent enemies of personal liberty. There is only one way to deal with them. Cut them out to the very core, just as cancers. Exterminate them root and branch. Annihilate them, or they will annihilate us. And you know what? No matter what your beliefs, that this is common sense, folks. I, I particularly found the part where he talks about past philosophies, past, past beliefs, um, customs. Isn't it odd how we want to say that we're in the modern world, but yet we have the death shroud of past religious beliefs? We have advanced, but yet we're laid in the sepulcher of this death shroud of ignorance, the death shroud that we're never meant that you ask the question. And yet the very so-called freedoms have now become the very chains of our slavery today. Yeah. Book three. Love one another, it has been said, is the supreme law. But what power made it so? Upon what rational authority does the gospel of love rest? Why should I not hate mine enemies? If I love them, does that not place me at their mercy? Is it natural for enemies to do good unto each other? And what is good? Can the thorn and bloody victim love the blood-splashed jaws that rend him limb from limb? Are we not all predatory animals by instinct? If humans ceased wholly from preying upon each other, could they continue to exist? Think about today's political environment. Tell me where this is wrong and this out there is right. I'm fed up with it. Is not lust and carnal desire a more truthful term to describe love when applied to the continence, continuance, excuse me, of the race? Is not the love of the fawning scriptures simply a euphemism for sexual activity? Or was the great teacher a glorifier of eunuchs? Why did the supposed Christ have women around him? Why is it that they suppress the supposed Gnostic Gospels of his sexual intercourse with Mary Magdalene? 
I contend that Yahweh is a sexual pervert. I don't think he had anything to do with manufacturing, but I can tell you scripture after scripture where he finds the woman's vagina to be more magic than he can handle. Yes, I'm speaking very bluntly. Love your enemies and do good to them that hate you and use you. Is this not the depictable philosophy of the Spaniard that rolls upon his back when kicked? Hate your enemies with a whole heart, and if a man smites you on the cheek, smash him on the other. Smite him hip and thigh, for self-preservation is the highest law. Let me tell you something, folks. The Old Testament is built upon an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a limb for a limb. They realized they couldn't sell that to the Western world, and so they adapt this. But nowhere do you see this ever in action. He who turns the other cheek is a cowardly dog. Give blow for blow, scorn for scorn, doom for doom, with compounded interest literally added thereupon. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, eye of four hundred, a hundredfold. Make yourself a terror to your adversary. And when he goes his way, he will possess much additional wisdom to ruminate over. Thus shall you make yourself respectable in all the walks of life and your spirit. Your immortal spirit shall live not in the intangible paradise, but in the brains and the sinews of those who respect you have gained. Now that's a wonder how many people, if they were truly strong of spirit, would ever have any problem with any so-called evil deity, daemon, demon, angel? No, I don't think so. You'd be seen in the spirit world as one badass. Now, if someone decided to do a WrestleMania with you, well, now you know you've made it to the big leaves. But folks, I have a idea that the other side sometimes may not be as rosy as we see. I know this is kind of completely counter to what we are, but folks, how do we learn? I mean, how can you now, you can now say, listen, I didn't read the whole book. I mean, if you want it, I got it on PDF. It's easy to get, but most people have never even read the book yet. They will condemn it as evil, as bad, yet they don't have a clue as what's inside of it. How can you be a practicing witch if you've got this cockamamie idea that you can't read something that the one who's apparently giving you power wrote? Why is it most politicians are Satanists? Why is it that most of the entertainment world are Satanists? Why is it that many in the philosophical, the sciences? There's a reason for this, folks. We've lived under an illusion. And we live the reality. I mean, you know, we keep the TV off most of the time because the reality that's going on, that's Christianity. These, right now, we have a Supreme Court nominee that you have supposed Christians that get the dead ash put on their head each year to, I'm a Christian, who act worse than Lucifer. Lucifer isn't, you know what? Lucifer wouldn't have them. Satan would reject them. They're nasty. No one wants to be around them. But this is the reality that we live in. We live in where the haves and the have-nots far exceed the haves. And I think we have to be strong enough mentally, spiritually, to handle the news. I like what Satan said. Wait a minute. You've drugged my name in the ground for 2,000 years. You vilify me. You defame my character. I've never said a word. Now I'm going to talk. And what his words do is they indict 
the very system that we base our culture and our society on. And he proves it's a fraud. Well, Peter, you can call them scumbags, but guess what? They are part of your core reality. And, you know, I don't think they are scumbags. I think that's very, it's almost bigoted, Peter, to say that. What, you are you basically saying that all universities are scumbags, all politicians? You know, that's not right. You can't do that, Peter. You can say some. Did you say some? No. And folks, I know that this is not popular. Listen, I have lost tens, the thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers. Why? Because if we're really going to be what we say we're going to be, we have to know the playing field. And the vast majority of those in metaphysical new age thinking have no freaking clue who the players on the field really are. And when they get out there, they get their asses kicked. And we know why. Thank you, Teresa. It, it, it's a heavy one. Not all. All right, Peter, I love you, dude. <laughs> it's, it's that we can't be like that. Listen, I don't agree with everything that whoever wrote this is, but I'm also a logical individual. I'm looking at it, and I, I like what someone wrote over on uh, Trina's, and Trina tomorrow and I on, on a second look, join us, is that, all right, you've had 2,000 years for your peace and love message. Hell, you even had Woodstock. Why is it that you humans can't seem to get it together? You keep on preaching love, you keep on preaching this peace, but yet your evidence and your action shows just the opposite. Well, you would say that if you had a, a friend in an intervention that had an addiction that was killing them, all you've done is just given them more heroin. Because if you can't be honest with the situation, No. <laughs> you mean the world lies? Uh, I am. I don't know if it's the world or if it's us. Listen, I keep telling people, you know, I, I had to once make, you know, where you have to hold the thing and you person, the person earlier said, do you swear the trail of the truth? So help you God. And I stopped and said, which God? Now they don't do that. Now you take an oath based upon your own word. Well, gee, didn't we just read that? And when you go over into the spirit realm, what do you think you're going to do? If you think that there are ghosts and evil demons here, what, you think you have a veil of protection over there? What, what gives you that assurance? You know, that's the problem. Lynn and I were talking. I said, so we were told that God is God. Who said that? It is, it's, it's words, folks. It's just, it's a bunch of God damn words. That's all the fuck it is. It's just words. Words. You don't know who wrote it. You never met the author. That book doesn't even exist. But yet, we're saying that this is what spirituality is. This is what the afterlife is. How the hell do you know? It's just words. There's no validation for it. There's no authority for it. There's no history for it. But yet, we can't use modern day thinking and philosophy to overlace this. How many people have died because of this book? A hell of a lot more than any Santanic Bible, I'll tell you that for sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Loretta. It's just sometimes you just have enough. And I'm trying to figure this out. It's like the rest of y'all, but listen, I don't want to lie to myself either. It's not getting better out there. It's getting worse. Now, if that's the case, I need to know why. And I think when you get all sides of an argument, of a debate, 
you can now begin to extrapolate, well, I didn't know that. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. Apologize for the language. Uh, I really do. Um, but I'm tired of seeing people dying. I'm started, tired of seeing people emotionally devastated. And I'm tired of seeing people helpless. And if we can't discuss books like this, like the Santanic Bible, then it's, then folks, it's an illusion. We're living a fairy tale. You're only looking at what you want to see. You only want to see and only hear what you want. And, and that's not how you learn. That's not how you grow. It's not how you're challenged. And all you, and all you fuckheads fall for it. All you imbeciles fall for it. And and I've been saying this for years privately. All you imbeciles seem to think that if you vote Democrat, we'll vote, we'll save the country. All you imbeciles seem to vote Republican, we'll save the country. Fuck the party politics. Screw the party politics. They're all, they're all servants of the devil. As the Christians would put it. It doesn't matter if you, if it's the Lucifer devil. Actually Satan. Because devil and Satan are different. The tempter. And the adversary. Two different people. One could argue. One has argued this. I don't know that exactly for sure. But I've heard that from 6 Hex and Hammer 666. It's like. It's like. And yeah, I'm being I'm being kind of berating because I'm just sick and tired of the divide. And maybe I shouldn't call people idiots. In fact, I retract that. I shouldn't have call, said you idiots because that's a that's a well fuck you too. That's a screw you too, buddy. But that just shows how how annoyed I am with this whole. But this whole, my party is the party of God. My party is God of me. It's the party of reason. And those right-wing conservatives are a bunch of white trash racist motherfuckers. It's like, like, let's, let's label everyone who's on the right of me a Nazi. Let's label everyone on the left of me a Dirty, filthy communists. And I say, and I say, screw the party politics. I agree with George Mother, Fra Mother Martha Franklin Washington. To hell with the politics, party politics. To hell with party politics. This is why he hated party politics. That's why he freaking hated it. Is it so easy to divide people on one end of the political spectrum? The fact that I'm willing to call a bunch of people idiots, which I shouldn't have done at the beginning of this, This tells you a lot about how, how very impatient I am with, see, deer, deer, even I'm, see, deer don't like, don't like human affairs. Well, they, they don't care, they just don't yell like an asshole. It's like, this bothers me. It bothers me. Because I don't give a shit. I don't want to give a shit. I don't give a fucking shit about Trump. Fucking shit about Biden. You know. 
You know, the presidency, the Congress, and the House of Representatives, it's all, they're all, they're all a den of thieves. They're all a den of vipers. You know, and I wish I could knock down the money changers' tables, but you know what? The money changers, And, and the rest of the hypocrites would just, all they would do, all they would do is just, um, all they would do is just arrest me. And, you know, what, what can be done? I don't think there's anything that can be done. Only hope for that the outcome turns out better than we thought it would. You know? All this... All this, uh... We need to send Trump supporters to be educated... Trump... Uh... The children of Trump supporters to be education camps. Yeah, I... Yeah, you're, you're kind of a terrible human being. Because I don't agree with his politics, with the politics of those parents. And you, you, you people, and if you think that's right, you're fucking Gestapo. You're a goddamn Nazi. You know? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you're, you are what you preach against. You are a Pharisee, a hypocrite, a evil human being. You should be, you should, you should pull the plank from your own eye before you go to take the speck from your brother's eye. You know? You feel that's good, then, then fuck you. Seriously, fuck you. Shame on you. Shame on you. I'm just... And... You know... This whole... Notion of... Of... I think both parties... Are arrogant. I think both parties... Need a... Need a reality check. I'm sorry. Why are we even taking this stuff way too seriously? Why so serious? The printed words of the Joker, why so serious? Put a smile on that face. Laugh. Laugh at the freaking laugh. I'm gonna have to start laughing at the absurd. Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! Listen to the hypocrite! Listen to the hypocrite! The guy calling me a Nazi, calling him a communist, and what and what and who and who. Advocating that people be thrown in the education camp. No, that's what the that's what the commies and the Nazis and the fascists did. You know what you sound like? You sound like a Which it doesn't really matter to call them fascist, call them communist, call them call them uh socialist. By the way, the Nazis were socialists. That's not true. They were socialists. Yeah, they were. You, know, this, you disagree with me. You look it up. And, and if you still disagree with me, you can piss off. I'm sorry. I'm right. And you're wrong. I'm sorry for I st I'm Actually, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry that I don't have to really say anything. Yeah, they kind of were socialists. You know? Pretty close to communism, at the very least. It was in their name. 
National Socialist Party of Germany. You know, you can read uh, the Communist Modern Manifesto, or you can read like other books. You know, they were. Well, uh, you know, this is like like when you hear some of people on the left advocate for re-education camps. Kind of makes you wonder who are the real fascists. I mean, it wouldn't matter what term you used. Fascist, communist, national socialist, they're all the bloody same thing. Bunch of freaking socialists. Pretty much, you know, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Socialism is. There's still a bunch of socialists, you know, and a lot of people don't have the common sense to see this. I really think it's mostly, I'm willing to forgive that, but I'm kind of like, whatever, you know, I'm kind of tired of politics kind of tired of the political divide. I just want it to be over without anyone getting thrown into gulags and sent to re-education camps, whether it be children or adults. Because you're a garbage human being if you feel that's what needs to happen to people. You are evil. And I don't know if I would I would want people working for me who think like that. You're 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 all you're worse than a pedophile. You're worse than a freaking pedophile if you think that. You're like the number one person I would not have worked. You know. It's like, it's like, seriously, like you would be number one, pedophiles number two on the list of top ten, five people I would not have working for me if we were working with children, you know. Child, especially if it were at Child Protective Services. Oh my God, Miss Piggy, bribing children to lie about their parents. Screw you, Miss Piggy. You're evil. Number, actually, you're number two. Pedophiles are number three. <laughs> That's the irony. Pedophiles. Or like number three on the list. That's 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 it's amazing. Pedophile was number three on the list of three people I would not have working for me. If I work with children. Number two Miss Piggies. People who bribe the children to lie about their parents being bad parents. Number one we need the this one's political. Send our ch- send the children of those people on the right of me to re-education camps. I wouldn't even say that about people on the left of me. Like fucking authoritarian. It's like God. What time is it? It's the time. 8.17. I think we can still walk a little bit more. I think we can walk a little bit more. And continue to talk. Let's come up with uh, two more people. Uh, 
People just not very responsible with children. Yeah, you people. Like, irresponsibility. Irresponsibility. With safeguarding the safety of children. I we'll have to define that one a little bit more. But I think I at least have my number three. I have my top three at least. Authoritarian, not jobs. Good job! You authoritarian nut jobs. Uh, pedophiles. Not pedophiles. Miss Piggies. Miss Piggies. Uh, pedophiles. I actually think and that's really interesting. I don't consider pedophiles to be as bad. They're pretty bad. Pretty bad, but compared to... That's not... Pedophilia is not something that in every case is something that one can easily do anything about. Even in the case of the, uh... Of the other... Of number one, the authoritarian, that could just very well be unconscious biases coming right through. So, then again, number one should be number two, and number one should be Miss Pig. Yeah. Because I can also be argued that this is just unconscious biases. That these the people could have these unconscious biases. That's why Jesus said, if you recognize your own unconscious biases, you would have said that. And he was kind of saying that when he said, take the plane from your, from your own eye before you go to take the speck from your brother's eye. Seriously. It's one of the big problems with, um, with, with this whole idea of, of politics is that you get people who inevitably think who say stupid things need to be done to people and whatnot. I think people I think people need to just realize have respect to the people who think contrary to you if they're not breaking the law. And how is voting for for Trump breaking the law? How is voting how is voting for Biden breaking the law? Let's say that too. Put it that way. You know, I voted for freaking Obama once. And that was for his second term. I didn't get the vote. I would have, I would have voted Obama. I would have easily voted Obama like everyone else. Like Six Sex and Hammer 666 did. Um, like, to be honest, I just, I just think all this, this, uh, And it shows the double standards. Like, why would I, I think that way? I don't think you have people on the left who think that, you have people on the right who think this. And you wonder why. I, I, I think everyone needs, needs to chill. You know? And this, this is funny. Like that, that's so those signs that you saw at the beginning of this video. That's that's funny, isn't it? It's really funny. How? God, you know what? I'm just laugh at it. 
Just laugh at the absurdity going on. It's not the breakdown of reality. The Sheridan part. The Thomas Sheridan part. It seems like reality is breaking down. It seems like um, a bunch of stuff is going on. And it's like, let's, let's not get mad. This is laugh. This is all too funny. This is all too funny that people should be getting upset over over presidential candidates. Like, honestly. And this is reality TV. That That's like a good description of what's actually going on. You see Biden supporters, Democrats and whatnot, or whatever, putting signs out. Hi! Like what you saw in the beginning of the video. And you gotta ask yourself. You gotta ask yourself, what... That's so funny. People, people are just counting down the, the, the days till Trump leaves. Like, I've never seen that before. I've never seen that before. I've never seen that before. It's funny. I'm, now I'm beginning to sort of process it as ridiculous as I think about it more. As I approach it more. Now, this is just, all sorts of goofy, all sorts of uh, absurdity. It truly is absurdity 2021. I mean, I thought 2020 was absurd. My goodness gracious. The, the next four years are gonna be even greater absurdity. I bet. As everyone this is some crazy cockamamie nonsense about bureaucracy. I'm I'm looking forward to uh, the next four years. If we don't, if I don't end up in a gulag, I'm just oh, just hope that doesn't happen. Just joking. Or anyone else ends up in the gulag. Democrat, Republican. I don't know. It could happen. Don't really care. I, th I think. I think. I think it's absurd. I think it's all absurd. People taking this so seriously. People. Hi. People taking uh, taking the presidency of Trump way too seriously. Uh, you know, like it was this really terrible thing which happened. The only terrible thing that, as far as I can tell, at least I know this, is that he signed, signed some anti-gun legislation. You know. Idealistically, you know, hey, you don't want to, and the employer has every right to, to fire people they don't like pollution, one would say. I got to be very careful in the winter. It's like, it's like. Everyone's this, and you know what? I've never seen this ever before. I've never seen this with a president so hated. I mean, the closest is probably Reagan. Like I know Reagan got quite a bit of hate. And, and Reagan is probably one of the most progressive presidents that we've ever had. Now everyone sucks up to Reagan. I mean, everyone else, everyone prior to like 2010 was saying that Reagan is this, this bigot. 
and I've read the articles that, uh, from like 2006 that call Reagan a bigot. I don't know. And to be honest, I just don't give a crap. You know? If you start paying attention to these damn politicians too much, and pay little attention to yourself. I mean, all that should really matter is that you're not a bigot. Or that you're a bigot and you need to change that. I mean, I don't care if the president's a bigot. Because there's nothing I can do about that. It's not in my control. I'd hope that we wouldn't, the God honest truth, I'd hope that we wouldn't have a bigoted president. But, you know, you know, I personally think that's something that people care too much about. And that's been my problem. You have people, and by the way, I'm referring to this. I'm referring to that. You got, you got people on, on the political spectrum a advocating. They, like, it doesn't matter what political spectrum. Yeah, I think I would. Just because you're a danger, you're a flight risk. And at that point, it's more of an issue of flight risk. Like, because I know most people aren't bigoted, aren't racist, they're not sexist. You get labeled sexist because we don't agree with you. You're a Trump supporter. I mean, the same could be said about every Democrat. Like, dude, every, the same could be said about every freaking Democrat. Anyone who voted for Joe Biden, you're a dirty, filthy communist. That's not the case. That's not the case. And why is that the case with every Trump supporter a racist, a sexist, a homophobic? Like... And then... And no, that's just, that's absurd, man. That's just absurd. You know, you got that, and then you got this, people <coughs> counting... The days of when Trump leaves office, the, the reign of tyranny will be over. Because they believe the fucking media. Which are a bunch of lying... A bunch of lying, uh... Which are a lot, bunch of lying wankers, what they are. And... And... That's the irony. That's the irony.
Yeah, this this incoherent ramble about about American politics. But one of those vapid subjects in history. And I'm just looking at all this stuff going on with uh, PBS lawyers advocating that the children of Trump, Trump privately, that the children of Trump supporters should be thrown in re-education camps and all that kind of nonsense. Man. When, 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 you know, the real fascists or the real, the real authoritarians, really, I'm just using the word authoritarian, when they, uh, start advocating that kind of crap, or at least, I know people on the right who probably advocate a similar thing, you know, that they show how, how really the truth is, is that everyone, you know, I've been saying this for years, I've been saying this for years, oh, the left and the right, you go far left, you end up on the far right, you go far right, you end up on the far left, you know, stay away from the fringes, and you won't come full circle into authoritarianism. You know? That's the thing. And yes, I understand the concept of a flight risk. Same to you. And I, and I get where people say, you know, Probably because I didn't know about the other view. Maybe, maybe the reason why some people voted for Trump is because they don't know a whole lot about Biden. They hear that this side say things about Biden, and then you have the—it's like Obama. It's like Obama. People thought Obama was going to be this amazing person. He just ended up not really being—he ended up being milk toast. And I, and I always laugh, like to laugh at the people who say Obama got things done. You know, Obama basically didn't go through the proper channels. And he was a fool. Because, and probably because he knew he'd get shot down. There were executive orders. Or not something that you aren't always something that you go through uh, like to be honest I'm hoping that Biden isn't as bad as I've heard I'm hoping that I'm hoping that Kamala Harris doesn't become president. Because if all the things that I've heard about her are true, about her being a tough on crime, warmonger, she's gonna, like her trying to be like the big boys, cringe, woman, a woman, who, a person who, who don't know how to be like the big boys. You try hard. You do this, you do this, Kamala Harris, you're a try hard. You're kind of, kind of like a, you know, and I gotta kind of watch how I word things. You know, I don't even think it takes a whole lot to be president. It's like, it should be an easy job. Other than the paperwork and the thinking, other than that, it should be just a simple job if you know what you're doing.
But the reality is, nothing is as simple as you would as you would think. You know what? I think it's about time I be uh about about time that I be going to work. Because, you know what? I need to get some stuff done. You know. I just want to get this off my chest. I'm just... I'm waiting. To see whether this country descends into hell or it dis or if it ascends into heaven come the next four years. Talk to you soon again. Bye.